episode of the Makina series, uh, similar to, I think, the last one that we did, only this is just extending into the season a little bit. Uh, it's towards the, it's the end of October. It's actually November 1st today when I'm recording this. Um, but we're going to walk you through a couple GoPro hunts that I took her on. Um, it would have been the very end of September and early October. Uh, so we are a couple weeks behind, but we've been documenting as the season went on. Uh, and it's an interesting way for us to extend the series. The reality of training Makina um, into this fall is it's not, it's not, it's very little formal. Um, it's more um, giving her opportunities. And so and that has been on wild birds for us. So Grouse and Woodcock, um, we, we went, we had some great hunts. Uh, you're going to see more of that soon um, because we filmed quite a bit of it. Uh, not just with GoPro, but with Ben carrying the camera as well. So I'm going to walk you through this one here. Um, we're getting a little bit of footage from the GoPro and the audio there, and I'm watching it on my computer here, so bear with me. We've gone through some real roller coasters with her. Um, some some fantastic bird work, uh, some really amateur stuff, some real um, mistakes that just I don't know that they should have been made or not, but she's a puppy and you just kind of got to shrug it off here this year. Um, but it's really challenging for me because she does some th some things so well at times. Um, it, it becomes a mental thing for me, um, recognizing that at this point she's about 10 months old, uh, 10 and a half months old, I would say. Um, she just turned a year. Uh, she's going to turn a year this week. So um, this first week of November. So I have to really put, my, put myself... Um, and the dog into perspective oftentimes. So this is an early hunt that Chris and I hunted his dog named Willie. Um, we got back to the truck. We took Makina out for a short run and I was, couldn't be more proud of her. I didn't hit the girl poro on the first bird, but we had a woodcock pointed, flushed. We walked in, flushed it, missed it. This is the second one. So I'm going to push play here and kind of narrate you through it. Yeah. It's also the first time I was wearing the GoPro. Um, Look into me. So I learned to keep the gun down a little bit further. She's a little unsteady though, I think. Heel. Gotta be a woodcock. Okay. I have no idea. So I'm gonna pause it here. Um, so what happened there is we were on the trail main trail um about six i would say 60 yards maybe 65 yards um into the cover and you can see the cover it's not super thick uh it's getting a little low light it was in the evening um she went on point chris and i walked in i'm still learning at this point and still learning it now but at this point it was very early on to figuring out how the best way to walk in on her points to try to get shots i do think that once hunting season started it was a very different feel because I wasn't just walking in there trying to listen to a bird fly off and shoot a cap gun. Now we're trying to get into position to actually shoot the bird. Uh, had a good look at it. Chris and I both had a good look at it. It's thick woods. Uh, I won't make more excuses than I need to, but um, we missed it. No what was interesting was my starting to figure out that a lot of times she would go on point. I didn't know exactly why. I didn't know if it was because of the bird or if it was because of old scent. But as we walked in on it, I learned quickly, and this wasn't due to training, it was, it's just her. Um, she's very good at waiting for us to get to her. Then she's going to relocate. She almost always relocates. Very few times have I walked in on her, gotten into um, flushing or shooting range of the bird, and had her just stand it still the whole way through. A lot of times what ends up happening is, is I walk up on her, she's pointed solid, but no, you can tell by the body. I, I think I said there, she's a little unsure. I think I saw her head moving a little bit and maybe even her tail moving slightly. It wasn't much, but I, I could just, I could read in the body language there that she wasn't hundred percent sure. And as soon as I said that, and oftentimes she does relocate based on some of the noise we make. We try to get in a little bit quieter now, but um, when we came crashing through the brush, I think that put a little pressure on her, made her feel a little more apt to relocate. But anyway, she did, she relocated, and then she got downwind of the bird, and I could tell at that second point she had the bird. And so she adjusted herself accordingly. And 
the woodcock are easier for her to do that on. Um, and you're going to see that a few times in this video. The grouse are the ones that really throw fits, um, make her throw fits. She, she can't quite pin them yet. Um, she has at, at, in rare occasions, I would say as a, as a rule, um, the majority of the time she's not able to pin them as well, but she's getting better at it. Um, she's getting better and worse at the same time. So let me put, keep playing here. So that bird flies off. Um, Did you see it fly away? Another thing that yeah, is nice about no where I was. we've we've seen her is much less chase after uh, she doesn't have the the necessary interest to Good go and job. run real far after the bird oh, flies man. off. So this next one is early October, and I'll pause it here and kind of set it up. Uh, on this hunt, I had a buddy of mine named Sam. Um, he has a setter, a young setter, and we hunted, we alternated his dog and my dog. Had a great weekend up north with them, him and his dad and his brother. Um, on this particular hunt, we had already shot her first pointed grouse, this exact hunt. So probably 35 to 40 minutes before this, we walked into this cover. She went on point, she relocated twice, um, one side of the trail to the other. The second side of the trail that she went in, so as she had sent, we walked in on it, she moved. I did not push the GoPro button. So I, I just wasn't thinking, I kind of regret it now, especially that we ended up getting her first grouse, but she pointed the trail, she moved, she relocated. She went over the trail to the other side. It tells me that that bird was on the trail, moving around, um, feeding. Uh, this is in the evening, uh, after, late afternoon. She tracked it off of the trail onto the other side and locked up on point. Sam and I took about three steps into the cover. The bird flushed. I shot, wasn't sure if I hit it, um, sent Ellie in to make a retrieve because it was quite a ways down the hill. It went right down this deep, steep um, kind of ridge trail down into a bottom kind of a swampy area. We sent Ellie in, Ellie went in. It was a cripple, it had ran. She picked it up, brought it back to us. It was just, it was really, really an awesome experience. Now this is uh, about 25, 30 minutes later. We're walking down the trail and she went on point at quite a distance. It was 67 yards. I was using the GPS to, to kind of give me the right point of direction to go in. Sam and I started going in and we actually went the wrong direction. We ended up going about 30 yards the wrong way, turning. And we we're pretty jacked up at this point because we had just shot a point of grouse. Um, Sam and I were really having a good time. Sam loses his hat in this clip. I mean, we're just going through some extremely thick stuff. You'll see it, I'm gonna push a play. Ben actually did a nice job of editing this to shorten it up a bit. It took us four minutes to get from when I turned the camera on to get to the actual bird. We're not gonna bore you with us busting brush, but I'll let you see. We go in one way, we end up changing, going up the hill to the other direction. 26 this way. You get a good look and you'll see what happens. Spread out a little bit, Dan, go to your left a little. Go to your left a little. Big difference between now Sam, and then, pull, pull just in a, a three or four week window, we'd be able to see her at 37, 27 yards. yards. Maybe more. And now we're, now here she relocated. So we started, we ended up turning, changing directions, coming back up to her. We got within about 25 yards and you heard her bell go. So we stopped and listened. She relocated a point. We walked in on it. The audio on that GoPro got a little bit right, muted there. Um, but that was, what was really cool about that one was like I said, on the GoPro, we had over four minutes where she held the point for us to walk in. Now it was a woodcock. And so the woodcock um, allowed for a lot better dog work with her. Uh, at the same time, um, 
they probably I think they help her a lot. I also think they can create a little bit of a false confidence in her with what she can get away with movement wise. She'll have to figure that out. Again, that's a wild bird thing um, that just putting her on more and more birds, I think works her through that. Um, but I was really pleased with her being able to wait it out for us to eventually find her, um, walk in, make a flush, get good shots, and, and we missed. Um, but man, <laughs> exciting. And I, you can kind of sense that excitement in the two of us here. Um, uh, I had a real good look and I did not make a good shot. Dude, my heart is just thumping right now. That was a woodcock. A big, a big woodcock. Wow. My heart is just pumping. You lost it way back there, dude. Yeah. Okay, we'll find it because I can follow our tracks back. Here's the next day. This is a hunt by myself. You're going to see this is a grouse. Uh, good example of what I mean by the difference between a woodcock and a grouse and her ability to truly locate it. She was on a good point. I walked about 35, 40 yards, found her. She started to relocate and I stood and watched. Whenever she's moving, I'm trying to stop. When she's stopping, I'm trying to move. So there she goes to point again. This is the second time on this bird. Held for just a second, started moving again. And there the girl's flushed. So she was on point, now watch this, like she circles back around. She didn't even know the bird flushed. There she touches the scent. And she looks over at me like, hey, I think it was here, but it's not here. She can tell it's not there. So that was a learn, good learner for me to be able to see. She was on point, I didn't see her. And this was the difficult part about the thick woods. She was on point, solid enough, the bell stopped, the, the GPS vibrates. I know she's on point. I walked in, she moved. I do think she would hear me coming and move. Uh, it, it clearly wasn't strong enough scent for, to hold her. She moved, she clearly couldn't, didn't know where that bird was. Now, I don't. the thing that I don't know is, and this is what we're learning more and more as the season goes on and we get more experience and more opportunities to kind of read the dog, read the birds, figure out more about what's happening. I don't know if that bird's sitting still or if that bird's moving. I don't know if that bird's been in there for an hour putting scent down in lots of different spots. I think one of the things that I'm learning to realize is very rarely does my dogs come across the bird and point. Instead, what's happening is we're finding birds in locations where they've been and my dogs are touching scent where it might not be the bird itself. It's the scent that the bird has left recently. And so in the old days, my, my way of a flushing dog, we always just said she's birdie. And you could tell when there was a bird in the area. And we didn't really care where the bird exactly was because we just figured watch the dog. And you just watch the dog figure out the track and fl flush the bird. And the, the dog gave us awareness that there's a bird in the area. It made us be re more prepared, I guess, for a flush. Not necessarily that it's always gonna flush in front of the dog, but as we watch the dog, we're ready which helps us prepare for a shot. And then when the dog does track in a distinct uh, direction, it's usually the bird comes in front of it somewhere. It could be quite a ways, but it, it, it's, such a different, it's such a different thing, obviously. And I, I, I know that sounds stupid to say, but until I actually was doing it more often, I didn't recognize how big of a difference it really is in a preparation standpoint from a hunter. So that's what I'm figuring out for the first time over the last the few weeks is I figured out the training part a little bit with experience. And now I'm figuring out the hunting part with a little bit of experience, but having an opportunity to see a bird flush, she didn't. I understand a little bit more of what happened here. I think she got enough scent to stop her to point, but it wasn't the bird and she wasn't sure what to do with it. She waited. I walked in, she moved. I watched her. She searched and searched and searched. So she's got this little pattern where she starts to expand, looking, looking, looking. And now I've watched her enough times where you can see she works out of the area and there's no sense. So she comes back to the original spot and she starts another search. It's just like a tracking dog tracking a wounded deer. 
if they lose the track, I'm always going to bring them back to my last spot of confirmation. And then I'm going to let them work from there and start to create this pattern of where is the potential freshest scent or some fresh scent that I can start continue on with this track. Well, I think the bird dog is doing that as well. So she comes back naturally and starts to hunt. She went on point there, not quite strong enough. And I knew it. That's why I didn't walk in on it. I could tell by her body language. She wasn't sure, but it was enough scent to point. She pointed, then she moved again, then she's circling around and then she just happened to get too close to that bird and that bird wasn't comfortable and that bird flushed and she didn't even know it. I did and I wasn't going to shoot it, but I don't think she even knew. And I think that's another thing that people are talking a lot about not shooting mishandled birds. I think that's true in a lot of scenarios, but quite honestly, my dog isn't that crazy about the bird. She doesn't really care about them that much once they're down. So I don't know if it would hurt her that much. I, I don't think she wants to flush birds. I think when she flushes them, it's an accident. I don't think she's doing it intentionally very often. I think at times she's tracking them. I've seen that and you won't see it in this video, but we'll show it in other videos. She's tracking them at times and gets too close and they flush. But again, I think it's just this, I was, it was described to me, a friend of mine described this to me in a text message as I was explaining to him what was going on. He said, you'll see, these woodcock are good for her, but you'll see she really, she'll get this confidence up and all of a sudden start to like really push the bubble. How close can I get without popping the bubble? And the problem with the woodcock, I think are, they really do allow her to get away with a lot. This girl is flushed wild before she got good body scent of it again, but then you'll see, and I'm just going to rewind it a little bit here and watch it again. It, she circles back around and gets the scent after the bird flushed and then she hits that point again. And so when that happens, it's telling me a lot about her and her lack of really understanding it completely. But man, is she starting, you know, you can see her starting to piece it together. This next one is not far from that, where that girl is flushed. If I turn it up real, if you, if you listen real closely and turn it up, you'll hear, she goes on point a couple times and there's a couple times where there's flushed woodcock. You hear their wings. It's also the reason I turned the GoPro on is because the difference in the bell, the changes in that bell, I'm starting to really recognize when she's birdie without seeing her by the tone of the bell, the cadence and the rhythm of the bell. And so when it happens, I turn it on. Now you're gonna hear another, that, there was one in there, now you're gonna hear another one. There goes the woodcock's wings, and that stopped it. If you were aligned that and listen, you'll hear the, the twittering of the wings off, and it stopped her. So she got too close. I don't know. I couldn't see it. I don't know if she did it on purpose or not. I don't think she did. But when that bird flushed, she was close enough that she stopped. And so it's it's not perfect. It's not good, actually. But it's it's not bad because she's starting to... I think all of these are opportunities for her to put a little bit of information. What Chris and my, my buddy Chris and I were talking about is, well, that one went in the library. Like that one went into her mind. She'll think about that one. This is not far from there. This is, this all happened in a matter of about 20 minutes. Here she's got a solid point. I'm down on the bottom of the hill. I have to walk yeah. up the hill. She went to solid point. Yeah. I walked in and I actually remembered to push the button this time and we got her first woodcock uh, on film here. Her fir the first one I shot, I should say. Hit it on the second shot. Pretty sure I hit it. You'll see she's gonna. She's not crazy about birds. Uh, this one she did pick up. She carried it away from me a little bit. Um, you'll see the little 
kind of the cluster that we have here trying to pick this bird up, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it at all. She points it actually dead. The bird is slightly kind of, kind of alive yet. Here, 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 here. And this is the first time we've trying we're trying to do this and I we got a lot better at this as the season has gone on. Remember, this is the first weekend in October, and we are now into the first day of November. So in four weeks, boy, things have changed. Performance-wise, understanding how to handle the woods, all that stuff has changed dramatically. Now I was pretty sure she was pointing the bird I just shot, which it ends up she was, but I wanted to be sure there wasn't another one. Yeah. Taylor, dead. Dead bird. You can see Makina holds pretty steady here until Taylor looks like she's going to come in for the bird. And it's got to be the bird right there. Lost. She decides to grab a Lost. Hold. And it was fine. I Lost. didn't find that at all. Lost. Lost. Good girl. Lost. I wasn't sure if she had grabbed it. It ended up she did. My, my Makina, Taylor, here. here. Taylor was... Finally Akina, touching here, go on! It. It's a good dog! Akina, come on! Comes a little bit of a rodeo. Here, good dog! I think we got a dog! Here, 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 here! Good dog! Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it! Hey, 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 hey! That's not good! Here, Akina, here! Come on! Good dog! Taylor, 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 here! Akina, good girl! Taylor, here! Joaquina, come on! That's a good dog! Taylor, get it. Taylor. Good dog, Joaquina! That's a pretty big moment for the two of us. Now we this is we had shot a grouse the day before, pointed, shot a woodcock now pointed. Now this one happened about 10 minutes later, and it's the second grouse I get over her pointed, which we're gonna talk more about this as well. But um you'll be this the interesting thing to watch on this one is as I walk in, so she went she went down the hill. It was real hot, and you could see when she picked that woodcock up, she was pretty warm, and I did not carry water that day. So there's a little lake that's down the hill, not far, so my intentions were to, and I thought it would be good cover down there too, so we were going to work down towards that lake. I was going to get her into the water, give her a drink, let her cool down. This afternoon hunt was going to be a relatively short one. It's on a Sunday afternoon, and I'm about packing up to go back to my house, but um, I wanted to get her a, a little run. So as we're going down this hill to the, the lake, she went on point, the bell went quiet, and it was probably 55 to 65 yards away. And I'm gonna walk in on it here, and you're gonna see um, she ended up, it worked out beautifully. She got the birds pointed in between her and I, and I walk in on it, uh, boot my boot my best opportunity ever at a double on, on grouse. Um, missed with the first shot, got the bird with the second, but then you, as you'll see, there's a second bird that does flush. Um, actually flushes and sits in a, a tree for a second before it flies off. So you'll see this, kind of prepare yourself for what, what's coming here. And... Yeah. There's the second bird that comes up, hits that branch, lands on it, and then flies off. So I'm sitting there going, oh my god, I just had a chance at a double. Uh, pretty sure I hit the first one. Wasn't 100% sure, but I was pretty sure I had not hit it on the second shot. It was pretty thick, as you can see. I was shooting into some pine. And like I said before, Makina has very little concern about birds or real interest in birds after the shot. There she is. Good dog. There girl. 
We come oh. in, Taylor picks this bird Good for bomb. me. And that kind of wraps up um, what I will never forget, one of the better weekends good? of hunting I had with my dog. Uh, got our first point of grouse, got our second point of grouse, got our first point of uh, woodcock. Just a really, really great, great weekend. Um, and probably left me feeling maybe a little little overly confident i mean i left i left that weekend going man i've got a grouse dog we pointed we sh pointed and shot two grouse over her and a woodcock in a weekend and we did miss several other week woodcock and we knew that the woods were going to get better as they thinned out and as you're going to see we we continued to film um that's it for this episode but we continued to film over the following three four weeks uh and are going to continue over the next month uh, or however long we get of the season before the snow gets too much. But um, it's been a real, like, this was a great way to really build some enthusiasm uh, and momentum. I've been reminded multiple times since that um, I've got an 11 month old dog. And so as good as she can be, she can struggle equally um, as, as, and perform as poorly. Uh, it's just, for me, it's a, a, a really good opportunity to look back on this and recognize like the ups and downs that are going to happen and be okay with. Um, also, it's a, I'm, I'm just learning so much about um, understanding to just take it, take it as it comes. And so normally I'm not hunting a dog this early. If you guys follow any of our stuff with, I'm never hunting retrievers this early. Like I was going to take blue who's very, very young as well. I was going to take him on a duck hunt that I knew I wasn't going to shoot any ducks. And we did at our cabin. Uh, that's, that's good experience for him. He's quiet. He's steady. He's calm in the, in the blind. And the hunt wasn't going to be more than an hour. And I just thought it was a good opportunity. If I was going to go on a, on a hunt where I was thinking we were going to shoot some birds, I wouldn't bring him. It's just not the, the experience is not worth the risk with a young retriever with this pointing dog, with this setter, uh, it's all about the opportunities. And I think one of the things that I've, I'm learning is I've given her a lot of them. And on one hand, the argument may be more opportunities, the better. I, I'm actually thinking and learning that, you know, it comes, it comes to a point where the opportunities, I don't think, although I don't think they hurt, they can only gain you so much uh, in relative comparison to maturity of dog. And she's immature. And so as I continue to expose her to stuff, I was getting kind of frustrated because I was going, man, you're seeing all these birds. I did a count in my journal as of like October 30th. Um, we're at like 240 some grouse this season, 150, I think, woodcock. Now she hasn't seen them all. That's our group. So, but she's probably seen, she's seen all of 50% of that. So at least, so her exposures have been great, but I think that, and you're going to see this because we hunted with my buddy's dog, Willie, who's a, about 10 months older. Um, we hunted with him for a week. And I feel like one of the things that I picked up that week was his maturity in one year's time has allowed him to do a lot more with less birds, where her immaturity is restricting or holding back exact just exactly what I want her to do with all these birds and so I can't speed that up like I can't make her more mature I can get continue to give her exposure but at times I think it's too much and I, I not to the point where I don't think I'm a hunter but I also I look at it and I go the more stuff she gets in front of it's a it's a diminishing law of return there so so that's something that I'm balancing and that you're going to see it more in more of these upcoming episodes i've got blue in the background in the kennel here giving me a little wines so i think he's got to go to the bathroom that kind of wraps up this episode i appreciate you guys following along listening um and, and kind of going along the journey with us here with this first setter of mine um please do me a favor if you're liking these uh you this youtube series if you do us a favor and, and subscribe if you're not subscribed that will allow you to get notifications of when the new ones come out uh, it'll also help us um, reach more people. So, and that's our goal. Our goal is to help as many people as we can uh, enjoy their their journey with their dogs. So, 
If you do that for us, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for all the support, and we'll continue doing these. <laughs>